That's right. Because you realize they're just fucking people too, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> especially as a parent now. Yeah, yeah like, especially oh, as a parent man. now. Like, I don't know what I'm doing all the time. And then I took my other one come and I'm talking to him and I'm like looking down at him. And I'm like, I don't think this feels like, I'm not trying to scold you. This is just a conversation yeah. about what's happening. Let's get eye to eye. I need to lower myself yeah. right now because mm-hmm. I don't want you to feel like you're you're in trouble, you're losing, you're bad. Like, no, let's have a conversation right now. It's a little bit heavier set, and I'm just kind of sitting down. And I'm just watching them, and they just start ripping up and down. And they just did like the same amount of laps I did, but like in four minutes, effortlessly. Damn. I say, what's going on? What up, family? This is the Decisive Element Podcast with Ronnie Portillo. Now let's get it. Study. Action. Go. <laughs> go. Go now. Hurry up. Let's go. Hey, what up, everybody? We're back with another podcast because we're staying consistent, bitches, and we're moving. Welcome, Ken. What's up, man? Shout out to Eagle Eye. I like that name. Thank you, bro. That's cool, man. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, welcome. Let me put this a little bit closer to you, bro, right there. Cool. Can, yeah. can there you go. hear me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, cool, man. Um, yeah, welcome to the podcast, man. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's, it's an honor. It's a it's a blessing. It's yeah. different. It's different. <laughs> it's a little used to. I'm you know? excited. I'm gonna move this back just a little bit, bro. Okay. It's gonna be right there while you're talking. There you go. I'm a, I'm a rookie. In the, yeah, yeah, yeah. In good the podcast. Yeah, it's all good, man. Oh, yeah. Don't even trip about it. Um, but yeah, man, I'm grateful for you here. Uh, we met at Tyson. Shout out to Tyson De La Cruz. Um, uh, met him at his birthday party. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We started talking, found out you got a men's circle here in town. Yeah. Uh, experienced that. Great time. Thank and you. And then man. was just like, hey, man, let's fucking uh, come on the podcast and chat. Let's find out who is Ken. I'm interested in who's Ken, man. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. man. So uh, where to begin, bro? I found, I saw that you were in the, your active army. Yeah, I did active duty. Yeah. For, uh, where are you years. from? First, where are you from, man? So I'm born here in Las Vegas. Okay. I got to live growing up in Mexico for a few years. No way. Yeah, yeah. It was okay. pretty cool. And then I uh, came back to Vegas and been here for the majority of my life. Okay. You know, yeah. yeah. Lived in Georgia for a little bit too. Okay. It was a good time. Yeah. Yeah. So what was in Georgia? Uh, military. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Duh. Uh-huh. Fucking Benning? Yeah, I guess yeah, you were Benning. Benning. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. So, what made, so how old were you when you did that? So I joined pretty much uh, like 17 years old. Okay. Uh, so I didn't didn't go to high school. I, I got a GED. Okay. At the time, I was going to go join the Marines. Cause, yeah, fucking, uh, oh, yeah. We're going to be fucking hardcore. The, the few, the proud. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those commercials, <laughs> bro. They yeah, me. they hype people up, man. <laughs> yeah. You know, I always thought they looked handsome in their uniforms. Okay. So I said, oh, man. I got to be like that. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Be like that guy. Yeah. You know? And uh, went in there to the recruiters and... and um, they didn't take uh, they didn't take high school dropouts. So you know, oh, at all? Yeah, yeah, no, no, you, no GED at all. No GED. Oh, yeah. okay. So you had to have a full, you know, graduate normally gotcha. or fifteen college credits. Okay. So that's when I said, okay, well, what else is out there? Yeah, yeah. What else can I figure yeah. this out? Yeah. And then I saw the army, and they had a lot of opportunities. Okay. So I said, okay. So you were an officer, or were you enlisted first, or? Yeah, what so was your whole thing? I, I enlisted, okay. but with the full intention of going the officer road. Okay. Right? So went in, enlisted, and then I did the uh, the SMP program. Oh, so you enlisted to the Guard or active? Uh, or act- reserves? Well, actually, what is it? No, yeah, I did Guard initially. Okay. Yeah, Guard yeah. initially. And then from there, it's, it's been a while, bro. And then from there, I immediately contracted as a cadet. Okay. So did the the non deployment status? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did the SMP program? Okay. And then from there, uh, that's where I met Bats actually. Yeah. At UNLV. Julian Bats, AKO. I don't know remember the episode number, but he's there. Follow yeah, he, he's yeah. out there, man. He's yeah. a good guy. He's yeah, solid. thirteen. He's, he's, a, he's a badass. Yeah, man. yeah. Thirteen, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think so. There. Episode yeah, 13. thirteen. Yeah. Um. So yeah, man. From there, uh, yeah, commissioned as an officer. Went the went the infantry road. And, Damn. And, did you? Uh, yeah, had a little bit of fun. I got injured. No and, way. Uh, yeah, man. I messed up my leg a little bit in training and uh, and then sh- separated out. Damn. Yeah. yeah so, okay. Say so. hey, whatever. You did it all. Yeah. 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 You know. Okay, cool. And then came back here and then came back to Vegas after the military. Uh, at the time, my uh, my ex-wife was pregnant with my son, Odin. Okay. And uh, yeah, I figured it just seemed natural to come back to, to yeah. home okay. after getting out of the military. Yeah. You know? Leaving Uncle Sam, yeah. And like, all right, let's let's go back home. Let's go do our shit then. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Cool. So, what are you doing now here, man? So right now, I run my own solar company, nice. solar business. Hell yeah. Um, doing that, and then I'm writing a book, and then Hell yeah. 
trying to build a different uh, different brand business. Also. Okay. So yeah. Hell yeah. So yeah. So what made you start the men's circle, bro? What what is all that path? And then we could talk about your martial arts or however it fucking comes up into. But like, I was gonna say because you yeah you've been on the men's group talk for the past couple of podcasts. Yeah. You've just been all about it. All about it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, who? Me? Me. You? Yeah. Nice, man. Yeah, well, we got to hear well, yeah. about your, your whole experience yeah. in, uh, in Hawaii. Here. We can. So, uh, yeah, man. So, so the road to, I want to say. What's your work been looking like? Because <laughs> that's really what got you to there, right? Yeah, man. It was, it was the yeah. spiritual journey that got me to, to that point. Yeah. Right? So, to kind of backtrack a little bit, after the military, mm-hmm. I, I went into business for myself, okay. had a marketing company, uh, and, and had a had a really fun time. Mm-hmm. Right, it was in the nightclub entertainment industry. It's part of what the book is about. Okay, and um, I, I came up with a quote saying, you know, uh, the, the greater your ability to to thrive in darkness is equal to your ability to thrive in the light. Mm. Right. And, uh, you know, that was all nightlife and it came with a whole different world and arena uh, of things. Right. So from there, uh, I built up this whole strong ego, strong business. Uh, My world kind of came crashing down when uh, I received a phone call early morning one day. Right. I was with my uh, with my son at the time and uh, 10 a.m. See a phone call hit my screen. Right. And my father was calling me. Right. Mm. And. um so my, my father, you know, doesn't really call me throughout the day too much. If, he, if he's going to call me, he's going to call me at night. He works the graveyard shifts. Okay. So I just had this instinct, and I knew yeah. something was off, man. Mm. So I pick up the phone, and um, unfortunately, my brother had just shot himself, actually. Mm. And um, so I said, oh, man, you know. Yeah. It, it, and everything changed at that moment. Uh, so thank God my brother's actually still alive. He's, he's still here. Uh, he's, he's got, you know, he can, he can see out of one eye and, uh, he's still here. He's thriving. He's going to school right now to be an EKG tag. So he's doing his thing. Um, but that gave me a lot of insight and I said, okay, I have to reinvent who I am going, yeah. and, and, and go down a different path. That's going to be a little more, uh, a life with a little bit more meaning. Yeah. So I had built up this ego in the entertainment industry, uh, with, with the business that I had. And when that happened, it was my my darkest night. Right, I hit rock bottom, and I had to completely revamp the ego uh, that I had built up in the business world. On one hand, and on the other hand, you know, I told my family that day that happened, uh, a version of all of us died mm. for sure. You know, because the person we were prior to that event had to die and become reborn again. Right. As pretty much all traumatic events, yeah. I, I fast forward, learned about. Right. And in that hard reset, I pretty much just stayed to myself at the house, um, cut off all my hair for the last time. I used to be completely bald and put up all my jewelry and just said enough. And I didn't even look in the mirror for like three months. What? Well, why? You know, what, I, what really drew that home? What was it about your brother doing that that like made all that happen? Yeah, so it it was just a hard reset for me. Um, it was the death of the ego, bro. Yeah. You know, it, it just it was, I guess that 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 final grain of rice that mm. that tipped the scale. Yeah, it was already maybe tipping to begin with. Yeah, right. And then just that last little bit, I said, okay, it's time to hit the complete reset button. Uh, looked in the mirror and I said, that's, that's enough. And basically just didn't look in the mirror for three months and, and just reinvented who I was completely. So that triggered this whole spiritual journey for me where no, I did nothing but basically eat clean, train, spend time with my son and went through like what I call like a martial arts sabbatical, mm. right? Where I would just meditate every single day, uh, like five, six, seven hours a day, train, um, flow, discover the flow process and, uh, and, an interesting time yeah it's a beautiful time too because it was a complete rebirth yeah right uh and in that process i ended up being guided to a drum circle out here in las vegas which i completely stumbled upon by accident <laughs> right so i'm driving out to uh towards red rock and i pull over just intuitively to this uh place called oak creek 
and I start venturing down there and I hear these drums off in the distance and I was just going out there to do a little bit of training nice. um, you know a little, little bit of time grounding getting in, in the wilderness a little bit heard these drums and I stumble upon uh, a drum circle and I go in I'm like man what's this you know it's the first time I ever saw that have you ever you've, yeah, you've been yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's like man what, what is this first first time experiencing all of it um and in that process, uh, I got to meet a, a beautiful community here in Las Vegas, you know, which from then stemmed from meeting Tyson and uh, Richard and just all these different big figures here, Reed, uh, Sage, just a lot of good brothers and sisters, too, mm-hmm. out of that circle. Uh, so I, I kind of joined and integrated in that community for a couple years. And over that time, I realized just in day-to-day interactions and even within the community that the image of the divine masculine has been kind of changed over time, Mm. right? Mm -hmm. And before, I feel that, well, once upon a time, right, masculine just kind of knew, this is our role, right? We're warriors, this is hunter-gatherer society. And then now that we're not like bashing each other over the head (laughs) with clubs, it's like, well, I still have this masculine energy yeah. But I'm in today's modern time. Mm-hmm. So how do I channel that? How do I guide that? And uh, as a martial artist, I've learned just uh, what I like to call just techniques that uh, that allow me to kind of channel some of that energy mm. and guide it. Right. So I can stay in balance with who I am. And uh, I saw a little bit of pockets of opportunity to share things that I knew that I could share with the community and that I had hoped people would be open to yeah and uh and yeah with a um little bit of uh what do you call it? resistance right for sure yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> always motherfucker always there why are you there right there right yeah, there, bitch. You, yeah. Yep. <laughs> so that, that resistance demon you know pops up yeah. and it's like hey bro what are you doing you know er, you, who are you you're not qualified mm-hmm. to do that mm-hmm. you know and uh and, and so i kind of battled almost with the ego Saying, you know, no, 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 I'm, I'm not, I'm nobody to teach, you know, I'm still, I'm just a student to the game. Mm. So uh, eventually I said, no, let's just do it anyways, mm. you know, and, and I did. And, and uh, the first one was a huge success. Uh, my brother Sage, uh, Third Eye Warrior, Ian, uh, helped me set it all up. And together we co-created a beautiful circle. And then the brothers just showed up. And uh, I learned a lot about myself throughout that process. Mm. Initially, I thought that I would be leading the circle, but then I realized a brotherhood circle, nobody's really the leader, right? It's just, we all gather around. It's just, just a bunch of brothers coming together with a common intention of developing ourselves, right? So that's kind of how it started, brother. Nice, man. <laughs> how long you been doing it now? So we, I believe we just had our 15th circle. Okay. So we've been doing it for about a year and a half now. That's fucking badass. Yeah. 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 And I was at the last one, right? You the 15th were. one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you were. Yeah. So that was a cool experience, man. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Being, You know, what's interesting with me is to find is how I've been over the years really into this online community in mm. that sense, right? Starting with like Aubrey Marcus's like Go For Your Win course, his first stuff that he started putting out connecting with a lot of people in Austin, a lot of different deep tribes everywhere, really getting into a different section of watching these people online from afar, taking classes, going to you know, uh, Sedona. It was always outside of mm-hmm. Vegas. Okay. You know? Yeah. And then little by little as I've been, I was like, no, this needs to be, I need, it's like I've been in a transition period of really taking this home. Uh, this needs to be my everyday life. This needs to be my community, my people that I'm with that mm. I can really trust and got to and, and have, like you said, those guided, being guided and guided conversations. It's the collective that we're doing. Um, and it's been crazy to watch it manifest in my life. Like, look at what's happening. Like, I'm connecting. I'm showing up here, <laughs> Tyson this. And it all kind of started once I started getting deep into my shit. Yeah. My healing, my growth. Not that I wasn't, but then I realized, like, man, I've been holding resist. I've been resisting a little bit of it. Yes. You know, because you get caught. Uh, get caught. I, I was getting caught in the. Um, that's one of the lessons from Maui, man. Was just slow down. I got caught too much in the chasing the gut job, chasing the money, chasing the stability. Like, I don't want to say chasing the stability, but chasing those rewards, mm. achievements. 
I can run a marathon. I can do this. I can wake up early and do this. I can build this. I can build a team. I can whatever the hell it was. It was always about achievement goals. And then I realized, man, that's fucking putting a lot of pressure in myself. I am doing this to myself. Mm -hmm. um, and as I started doing the podcast, things that I really internally have been wanting to do for a long time, it's like all of a sudden the community starts showing up in my life. The, the men like yourself that I started meeting, there's all other Tyson, and all these other people, all these the different community I'm getting involved with, Sacred Sons and all yeah. these different men, you know, and, and then starting my own business now. It's like, oh, as you step into your, who you are, it starts to reflect outside of you. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. I want, this is what I want to be. And now it's like attracting, I'm, I'm attracting, but I'm only, I only want to allow where I feel I can be me. Yes. And I'm mm -hmm. no longer going to put too much pressure on myself where I'm like, this is fake. This is not really, I'm always questioning, do I want this? Do I want that? Do I not? Like, how many times am I going to keep fucking doing that? I know really what I want. Can I step into it? Right. And that's been the process, mm -hmm. you know, stepping into the new me, you know, yes. it's like having those different, um, what we were talking about before you get the podcast started, huh? You get to pick. You exactly. You design all of it. Exactly. But there's like that, that the, the resistance or that old motherfucker, like he wants, you know, I had a similar experience. My brother, my brother did pass away mm. in 2009. Okay. Or in 2008, excuse me, from a overdose on ecstasy. Okay. And um, I really, it really just like changed I was just boom on a journey of hurt. I didn't realize how hurt I was until like I just been going so much different things. I mean, it really shook me up. But now the question is for me is like, how can I do that without being without life's help? Mm. Life's going to do that regardless, right? Like things are going to happen. Unfortunately, someone will pass away again. Right. Something's going to happen. And that's the most extreme, but the flat tire, the phone call, you missed your appointment. You, you know, you know, those days where it's just like, what the fuck is going on? You know, how can I stay balanced and how can I stay me? And how can I not shout at my, the people I love? How can I not be somebody I don't want to be? Right. And really stepping into that has been a really journey for me. And imposter syndrome has come up like, oh, you're not that dude, bro. Yeah. You're not this dude. Like, what are you doing right now? Right. And it's like, so really dealing with myself, allowing myself to grow and change and be those things. Like you said, you stepped into, yeah. like you just got to show up. You do. You have to look in the mirror a lot of times. A lot of the times. You know, and take responsibility. And, and uh, oftentimes when, you, when you're like, man, who, who, who am I? Like, who, who was that guy that was just yeah. wigging out, you know? You want to blame, I, I, I don't want to say, I don't want to project, but like, I guess I feel like there was a part of me that wanted to blame everybody else. This shit's mm -hmm. unfair. Yeah. I wrote a poem with Tree, unless you guys can watch that podcast, but it's like the whole, the whole, I, I felt like the whole essence of the poem, I guess, really came to me is I was kind of pissed off at God. Mm. It's unfair you took my brother. Everybody else got their brothers. Mm. Why am I here dealing with this bullshit and no one's here? Like, I don't see this reflection back at me. I don't have no one feeling what I'm feeling. It's like, and that not meant to be. This is my experience. This is my learning. This is my journey. Yes. And once you start going in, it's like, it's my fault. I don't want to say it's my fault. Yeah. If I'm still hurt and I'm not dealing. It's my fault. It is. I don't want to deal with it. That's right. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it leaks out into the relationship with my wife, relationship with my kids, relationship with my friends, relationship with starting a business, everything. I love that, bro. You know, stems from me not taking responsibility of my life. If I want to be fit, if I want to be healthy, if I want this, whatever the fuck it is that I do want, it needs to come from me. Totally and then that, that just started a journey of like realizing, you know, self complete responsibility. Yeah, all the shit. Know. I got stuck on Jordan Peterson's ass because yeah. he's fucking like responsibility, <laughs> motherfuckers. I'm like, that's what I needed to hear. It's you really, want to take control? Yeah, you know, of not everything, just myself. Yes, you know. So mm -hmm. it's like, how do I stay in balance? But in with taking myself? control of yourself and all the aspects of self, right? You got your mind, you have your body, you have your heart, you have your spirit. Taking control of all those aspects within yourself starts to reflect outside yeah. of you. You know, because you mentioned it earlier too. It's mm -hmm. like you square yourself away inside, then suddenly you start attracting the right people. You yep. know, the music you start listening to changes. The the books you start reading change. You yep. know, the movies you start watching change. You know, maybe you stop watching as much TV. Yep. Stop doing as much social media, you know, and, and uh, you know, you go through that, that technology detox period. Mm -hmm where you just find yourself more yep. and you fine tune and calibrate yourself in all the, the tenets of who you are and you'll attract. Cause how do you know yourself if you're consistently looking at other people? Comparing. Right. Comparing. Oh, they got this shit. They got that shit. Or you're just entertaining yourself based off the movies you're watching. Right. 
then you're, mm. you th- maybe you're not doing a drug, but that's kind of the drug in some sense to me. Yeah. I used to just come home, chill, and we watch TV. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm numbing myself. You unplug. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That unplug from myself. That's right. I say I'm from everything, but really I'm unplugging from myself with mm-hmm. just everything. Yeah. So it was just a learning experience and for me, man. So what I think about sometimes is um even in those when you when you start to develop that habit of watching TV a lot, you know, maybe someone out here can resonate with this, but when you're when you fall into those habits, almost think about if somebody was filming you and or maybe just do it. Just film yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I've done that so many times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I you know what I do is I'll put like a time lapse. I'll really? Put my phone on time lapse. I'm actually doing it right now, but nice. <clears throat> um, but yeah, like just because I think it looks cool, but then I I have that in the back of my head that like someone's watching me because I procra- I procrastinate like crazy. Yes, I procrastinate hard. So yeah, that's a good skill. Work. Yeah, to watch. It, yeah. It's it like look work. what I'm really doing. How much? What what did yeah. I really accomplish today? Self awareness, man. Yeah, and that's the whole point. Yeah, right. And mm-hmm. that's the whole point of the decisive element. It's on me. Yes, mm-hmm. everything is on me. Okay. Maybe as I was a kid, this is what happened to me. But okay. sooner or later, you got to find out. You it's have to take responsibility, me. man. I am the reason now. Even the traumas. No my one's parents come to save did you. their best. They did whatever that is. When you get to that point where it's like they did their best. They didn't know if they had teachers or whatever the fuck it is that they were going through their own shit. That's right. Because you realize they're just fucking people too, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> especially as a parent now. Yeah, yeah like, especially oh, as a parent man. now. Like, I don't know what I'm doing all the time. You know, I'm just like creating shit as, as I come. Like, yes. you need to do this, you know. Um, so realizing that that's why you know once it's the decisive element is that you got to get to that point mm. and it's not always easy because there's a something inside of you i don't know if it just it's always there mm-hmm. that you just want to be comfortable and just be right and if you're consistent you're content with your life with that what it is then crying great right you know and that's good too yes but it's like the relationships develop with the type of life you want, the type of being, the type of state you want to be in. If you want to, those things to change, if you want to feel a certain way. No one's coming to save you. No one's coming to save you. You got to be your own hero. That's right. You know? The hero's journey. Yes. And 100%. Hell yeah. Awaking up within. Yeah. You know. So what, do, what are techniques that you do to keep yourself in balance, man, or to keep yourself in centered with yourself? Yeah. So my morning ritual is, is sacred to me, man. Mm. Like it's, it's really... Um, if I don't have the opportunity to run my full ritual routine in the morning, mm-hmm. then I can feel off balance throughout the day, mm-hmm. you know. But if I have the opportunity to do that, uh, then then I just feel guarded and, and balanced the whole day. And no matter what comes my way, I'm more primed and protected to handle those situations in my best self, my higher self. So for me, it starts by just waking up early. And uh, I did read The 5 a.m. Club, you know, which yeah. I think was an awesome book. Um, however, I don't, I don't always wake up at 5 a.m. because I do stay up a little bit later, just the nature of my business. So I do wake up early, though. The first two, three hours of the morning are, are all for me. You know, so the first thing I like to do in the morning, of course, after you brush your teeth, scrape the tongue, <laughs> drink some water, get rolling, is I like to take control of my body, mm-hmm. right? I want to take control of something. So I want to take command of my body. And that's the first thing I can easily command and control. So once I do that... Boom, I'm connected to my body myself. What I do to connect to my body, it can be, you know, really anything, man. You know, you can run, you can jump rope, lift weights, and do my martial arts. I do qigong, um, some kind of training. I definitely try to get a sweat in, try to move, get some blood flow going. Seven days a week. I never take a day off, right? Then after that, uh, I always like to, depending on if it was very aerobic during my training, some breath work. Right. Mm-hmm. Breath work so important. Mm-hmm. Dives deep and then just sit in that meditative state and really just be, you know, and, and I like to decompress the day before, actually, during that time. So whatever came up, whatever thoughts could be internal, external, you know, I like to siphon them out and, and identify, OK, I reacted this way. But was it really me doing that or was it just my programming? Was it just my instincts? Was it the influence that I maybe was under um, or was it genuinely come from a space that I wanted to come from? Yeah. You know, and, and I like to kind of decide and, and cipher that out. So that way I can catch any micro habits forming, whether they're they're positive or negative uh, right away. You know, so a little bit of maintenance. Yes. And uh, and then from there, of course, just some manifestations, some visualizations. And then I like to roll into my goal setting. 
right? So a habit that I've picked up is in the mornings, I like to write out my goals, right? Uh, every single day, pretty for much. For the day? Actually. Or for like whatever? No, like life goals. Okay. Yeah, like like big vision goals, mm-hmm. right? It's, it's pretty much as big as I can go. Got you. You know, and it's the exercise of just dreaming big, and I like to review them all the time, mm. you know, uh, and, and see them because if goals are important enough to you, you should be able to write them down yeah. all the time. Mm-hmm. So, boom, and just flowing with the pen, right? And then from there, targets. So the goals are more long-term for me. Yes. And then the daily targets. Gotcha. So, yeah, that, that'll be the days, you know, okay, this, this is the objectives for the day, what I'm trying to accomplish, boom. And then uh, try to write out the timeline for the day then, too. So script out the whole narrative for the day. And then flow within that time frame, you know. I like to be in a flowy state as much as I can, but I block out the times of, okay, I'm going to be flowy from this time to this time. Gotcha, yeah. You know, that way I can You got to give your space, got to give that space for you to just be. Yeah. And not go to task to task. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if I don't put some kind of boundaries on my flow state, I'll just dip into the flow and, you know. Me, I could be in La La Land all day, which is, <laughs> <laughs> which is a great time. Yeah, I, but there's also timelines and other people that uh, I'm responsible for in my circle that are account that I'm accountable for. Gotcha. You know, that that depend on me to provide and uh, produce and to show up. Mm-hmm. So, with that being said, I have to be responsible and, and take accountability on all those areas, right? So that's that's what I like to do personally. You know. Uh, just some some things. Yeah, yeah, those are great things, man. I'm I'm telling you, like since I came back, but we're under we're under a little new construction when it comes to those daily rituals. Yeah, you know, I've been in an, another constr- the um, I'm in a transformation period because I was so used to working out for so long. It's so mm-hmm. early. Let's do this, 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 and now I found out my left foot. Though I was born with the foot, so I'm reprogramming how to run with these different type of insoles in my foot, and, cool. it's, and it's changing the way I can feel it when I don't wear my shoes, man. Like it starts to change. I can feel. My muscles in my calf and my leg feel differently. So it's like new programming. So it's really making me slow down. Mm. I'm really slowing down and then realizing what it is that I want to accomplish this day. How am I going to work out? I'm not just going to go into a 15, 30 minute boom, 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 boom. I'm moving and then go on to the next thing. Mm-hmm. I'm rebuilding my foundation. Yeah. The foundation really needs to be solid and structured yeah. and allow my space to be in a place where I am able to show up for my kids, man. You know, mm-hmm. and my wife or whoever one's around me is so I can feel the tension. What is going on and not be in a rush so much that I bypass that and just keep going. Because mm-hmm. I felt when I've bypassed that, things always come from that. Right. That I have to deal with later. Right. You know, and then I don't feel good. She, he, whoever the fuck mm-hmm. it is, doesn't feel good. Um, so it's like really learning how to provide this structure for myself. And what that looks like for me is like really just working out differently. I'm not working out with so much friends. It's like me and my boys. Me and my boys went to the gym this morning. Mm-hmm. And my oldest is literally more with me doing it. My youngest is eight. He's just kind of flowing there. But it's also, that's what I, I just want him to feel the space. Yeah. This is what we do. The energy. Yeah. This yeah. is where we're going. We're taking the hour to come here and do this. Mm-hmm. You want to do the treadmill for 10 minutes and then you want to go on the bike for five minutes and whatever. But we're here. Mm. My older son is like structured with me. Kind of let's do this and let's do this. His height, he did like two two miles today on the elliptical. I was like, hey, bro, whatever makes you, let's go. Just like, be in the space. Just be in the space to yeah. get that thing. Um, but then really learning how to also, another thing, rest. One thing, I did a hape ceremony, and mm. I realized that how much tension I hold in my hips. Mm. You know? and the Emotions get trapped there. They, yeah, it get trapped there, and it's I just get, I've been stuck there, and how these, you know, really working on my flexibility, trying to move my hips more, and really move them in ways I've never not, I, I've done because I'm pretty comfortable with it. I'm really comfortable within my body, but really giving that part of my body really like ease up. So when I do my breath work or my test, my you know, I'll just lay on my bed and put my hand on my hips and be mm-hmm. like, "Hey, bro, like, relax." Send that intention. Send there. that. Send those retention, the tensions of just relaxation, ease. You are good. This is good. I don't want this to be a thing later in the future. I don't want to be a thing now. I need my energy to flow and I need to be grounded in what is going on. Um, so sometimes that looks like sleeping in now, man. Mm-hmm. I've never been a person like I've been up at 6 a.m. Yeah. 5, 4, 5, 15 going to jujitsu at 6 a.m. Yeah. Or there's, you know, in the summertime, we would get up at 445 to be at the gym at 530 because it's hot as fuck by 637, yeah. you know. Yeah. So it's just like and we did an outside CrossFit gym. So it's just like learning these things. That's the way I was. But it's like I can't keep doing the same behaviors that got me to where I'm at now. 
So I'm in this transformation period of finding out what does that actually look like to me. So right now it seems like, yeah, I'm just sleeping in a little more. I'll get up. I looked at the stock market at 6, 5, 30 this morning for like 15 minutes. I want to make this trade. Boom, boom, boom. Did it. I went back, started reading my book, fell back to sleep for another hour or two. Nice. It's my day off. So it's just kind of like really enjoying this space because I've, I've never, I, I'm just realizing how much pressure I put on myself, man, Yeah. to go, go, go. So it's just, I'm really deconstructing that right now and yeah. allowing myself to just be. And I know that's like, that doesn't mean things are going to get done. I know I have the impulses. I know what needs to get done, but it's also like, there's a rest period, Yeah. you know, and I'm just like fully trying to let my body get into that space Accepting and, it. and you're here. This is okay to be right now. Mm -hmm. You've done the work. Things are moving. Nothing's not. And nothing stalled, you yeah. know. I'm just doing push ups later. Now I'm doing like a band, yeah. I do little workouts everywhere I go. I do a, my goal is to get like 200 push ups a day. Oh, good, you know. So, wherever yeah. I'm at, okay, squeeze them in. It comes in. Here we go, doom, Pop doom. Out 20. Yeah, it's like I, in the military, exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. so it's a, <laughs> I always think of basic, bro. Yeah, like, me too. You know, uh -huh. I, it's drop like, down, bro. Yeah, it's like this, <laughs> but I left basic with a fucking amazing chest, yeah. you know. And it's just when like, we're done with this, we'll do 20, bro. We can do that, right? <laughs> it's like a thing that just keeps going. So, it's like it's not it, one space doesn't mean I need, I only do workout at that moment. My mm -hmm. body's still living all day, yeah. So if I got tension, why am I not just moving my shoulders for a little bit? Let that fucking mm -hmm. energy get out of me because it's like I feel it. So why don't I give my myself permission? Yep. So I guess in sleeping in, just by reflecting on that right now, it's permission to allow myself the space that I need to feel rested. To rest up. You yeah. know, and do that throughout my day no matter where it is because I'm trying to show up from a place that is me like you were talking about. Mm -hmm. I really I really like that what you were saying. is like, Is it me doing this behavior? Or is it these little, you know, the trigger patterns that someone said this? Or is it my, my, my automatic, my programming that I have the way I spoke? That's just the way I say hello or whatever, you know? So I'm right. really getting into that space is that let's ease up, let's stay connected, and let's find what patterns come out in that way. Mm, I you like know? that, man. Yeah, bro. So mm -hmm. that's something I've been working on too lately. Awareness is a journey. You yeah. Know? What I was going to say to that too is, is um, you know, for us, I mean, I can relate to you a lot in, in just wanting to go, go, go yeah. and not take that time to rest mm -hmm. and, and sit in it and recalibrate it a little bit, you know. And uh, the last couple of years was been like three years I discovered yoga and it's been amazing. You Bro. Know? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, like, I, in the I, military, yeah. we laughed at it. I know. You know it it's like, part of the program, too. <laughs> That's the funny thing. Yeah. Yeah. But it's so good for you, mm -hmm. you know. So I still do my hard training. But the yoga has been able to show up in other areas of my life, just allowing me to surrender, relax, open up. Uh, and in blending that with the martial arts, I've been finding like, oh, wow, this is great because now I'm becoming more limber, more flexible, which has immediate applications to martial arts, which is just great. So it's been fun in my journey uh, to, to incorporate that. You know, I'm working on that because I did do that for a couple months. I was like doing uh, well, not, I think it was like 20, 15, 16 days or something. I was like trying to do a streak. Mm. Just go as long as I can with yoga every day. Yeah. And then I fell off and there's just like all these other things happen. I was like, I was talking to the, the, the wife and she was like, and just inviting me to like, you know, I'm doing this. Why don't you do this? You know, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to pick up a hundred day streak yoga where I cool. do yoga for every day yeah. for a hundred days and just really try to see what that, I, cause my body, that's going to help release the tension. It is. You know, it is. So I'm, I'm really, I'm yes, I'm just, if I'm uh, brewed on, it's just like, if I'm, I have to make the decision. Yeah. And I'm really like this. And I, I do just, that too. I literally just have to say, this is what I'm doing. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yep. And, and that's it. At a certain point, I did the same thing. I sat yeah. down and I said, you know what? Yoga has a lot to teach too. And I'm curious about it. And uh, I'm just going to sit down and I'm going to commit to going down this path for at least a year is what yeah. I told myself. Okay. And uh, let me experiment with it. Let me feel it. Let me learn its lessons. Let me see its applications. Because in all things in life, once you hit a level of mastery in whatever it is that you do, you know, you could be a painter, you could be an artist, you could be a singer, um, a rock star, whatever it is, right? A, a person who makes clay, a chef, and that's masterful, yeah, that's right? Yeah, yeah. Whoever. But when you go outside of your element and you go learn someone else's mastery, mm -hmm. right? And you, you've experienced mastery in a different realm already then you start to see, oh, okay, wow, this application applies here. Yes. You know, even seeing somebody who, who can swim really, really well, there's a rhythm to how they swim. There's a pattern to how they swim. One, two, three, breath. Breath, yeah. Boom, you know? Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> yeah. 
And before, uh, this this is random memory that I just had right now, but one time I went to the gym just to go swimming and I went in there with, with the macho man just to go work out, bah, 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 swim as fast as I can. You know, 20 minutes, I'm gassed, right? And I did, I don't know how many laps. And these two girls, twins, come in and um, a little bit heavier set and I'm just kind of sitting down and I'm just watching them and they just start ripping up and down. They just did like... The same amount of laps I did, but like in four minutes, effortlessly. Damn. I say, what's going on? So then I kind of went underwater, and I'm kind of like sneaking up to see them. <laughs> and then I noticed, oh, they got a rhythm to it. And then mm. they're counting. And they're not exerting their energy as much, you know. And that's when I started respecting just, oh, wow, swimming has mastery. And then this has mastery. This has mastery. And how can you apply this to other things, other Man, caveats it, of life? Yeah, it brings up, like, I was talking to a couple of friends. It just amazed me. Like, everything's a thing to a person. And what I mean by that, like, Pokemons go deep. Pokemon cards. There are yeah, people bro, who that's, are that's a whole thing, deep man. in that shit. Yeah, yeah, it but is. But then I have friends who live in, like, northern Nevada who are into horses. Mm. And they're deep into that shit. Like, that's a thing. Like, it's deep. Yeah. There is literally every category you can think of. Like, there is a, my, 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 uh, uh, my mom's boyfriend's into like comic books and stuff. Mm. That world is deep, yeah, it bro. Is, yeah, deep. It's a whole universe, bro. Yeah, it's not it, a world. No, yeah, it's like, <laughs> like it is, man. So it's like there are all these dip podcasts. Like there's, I think, what'd right. you say, bro? How many, how many podcasts are recorded, or what? What was the? There's like, uh, there's like a million podcasts. Yeah, a million, sure. right? Yeah, different a million podcasts, po- different types of people doing podcasts, right? How many news outlets? It's like everything is a thing. Alkaline water is <clears throat> yeah. a thing, and they go deep in that, you know. So. Human My friend's beings. actually about to sell water. Yeah, there's oh, a, yeah? Yeah, yeah. There's, a, oh. there's water sem- sommeliers. Like a, like a wine sommelier. They oh, have yeah? water sommeliers. Oh, no way. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, they, yeah they, but that's they what I'm like, saying. Like, wineries, they could down, right? They could sit down and explain to you like different waters <laughs> yeah. and like, how it's, they filter it differently and whatever. Like, everyone, that's highly interesting. Everyone gets into a thing. Yes. And there's, you know, it really, my son got into gate at, at elementary school. Mm. And... um. The way they test about getting there is already pattern recognition mm. about kids that can pick mm-hmm. up these patterns. And it, it, when you bring that up, it always comes into me because, I mean, the universe of spirals, the triangles, like mm-hmm. literally things are a pattern. It's a yes. secret. Uh, you know, the, the seasons of, of the year. Life is cyclical. It's, it's all a, a circular pattern. Mm-hmm. It's like, so when do, you know. Sequence of events. When, when, when is it best for, for people to start new things? When is it the best to come in? You know, like in recruiting, the biggest thing was like winter time's coming. People don't want to make decisions. Mm. So it's just like you might grab some people, but recruiting is not always doing good in the winter time because human beings like to just like animals. It's contract. cold. We contract during that time. But when the new year comes, all of a sudden spring, we're ready for the full new expansion. shit. Full expansion. So yes. that's when people want to buy houses. They want to do this. They want to go on trips. Like, there is a reason to these secular things that mm-hmm. we have. We're part of this nature, you know. So, mm-hmm. yeah, man, I feel that a lot. All things do. All things. Yeah, what yeah. were you talking about? Your gate with your son? Well, he got into the, it's a gifted and talented in elementary school. Oh, okay. And he got into the class. I can't hear myself. Oh, there yeah, we go. Yeah, you're good. Um, so it was just, and what I, the, it's not like math problems. Oh. It's not, it's not an English thing. It's literally about pattern recognition and how can they pick up the patterns and, and whatever. I forgot the whole spiel, but it's pretty much pattern recognitions. Can you see that the triangle comes on every fourth one? Okay. Can you see that this is what's happening the next step? Right. And there's some type of mental capacity that certain children see that or not see that. So then they have them in a class where this is what we start building. They start building different things. It really gives them that different, unique experience. So then they're, 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 it's a little bit... Uh, more intense where in a regular classroom they have to adapt to every different stage mm-hmm. this one's they're adapting to these kids like it's the the kids who are gift they call it gifted and talented right, right they right. can see the shit that's cool man yeah man so i'm excited my oldest was in it and now he's in it and i was really excited because they told me to get to mount it's like fucking good news man i'm excited for you you did something right man yeah man we're working on it bro yeah you raised yeah. him right man yeah well thank you well it's a, it's an endless process yes constant because kids are yeah always going yeah, um, being a parent is like one of the greatest experiences that I've had in life, though, man. It, it it's man, it's a lot of learning about yourself. Mm-hmm. It is, you know, completely. Yeah, yeah. How did I like being fathered, mothered? What was it? Mm-hmm. And as a man, what was the fathering that I liked? What the I full didn't circle like? of life, man. Yeah, what total is it? Lion King moments. It, total yeah, Lion yeah, King yeah. moments, like, bro. We're talking about <laughs> this. We're talking about that. You yeah. know, and really getting into it and recognizing that. 
you know, you just had a baby, so congratulations, right? She's it's my second one, yeah. Yeah, but my she's daughter. or the second daughter, yeah, yeah. That's what I meant. Um, um, yeah. but they're so different. Shout out to Oshun. Yep. Shout out. Yeah. Um, they're different. My oldest and my youngest are two different people, bro. Yeah. And like just the way they express themselves, the way they talk, the what is what hurts one, what doesn't hurt the other, and really learning to adapt to that. Mm. You know, I can't speak to them the same way. And I remember that really got me like with talking about sourcing God and like, what was that? I was like, there were different religions, the different mythologies, the different, all these different expressions of way that people in interpret source, interpret God, interpret mama earth, like all these different ways. It's like, oh, there's not, God speak to his children in all different ways. Yes. There's Lots no one right angles. way. Just be, like I speak to my sons differently. Why wouldn't a source that I have no idea, the infinite knowledge, expansion of consciousness, all that, mm -hmm. who makes it, why would I believe it only speaks one way? Yeah, no, it's, it's impossible, right? There's, you yeah. have one mountaintop here, yeah. right? But there's many different paths that lead up to the same mountaintop. Exactly. Right? So which path are you gonna choose to go up to the mountaintop, Yeah. right? And, uh, and I believe people, you know, one of the most important things you can do in life is just choose a path, choose a way, and enjoy it and, and find the journey. Just know that you're going towards a direction, something great, you know. How, let's talk about that, man. You know, because I feel like that's a big thing that I f hear from people. Okay. You know, how do they know what path they want to choose? Yeah, yeah. Experimentation, mm -hmm. I think, you know. You have to try out, um, I think, just a lot of different things, trial and error. I think one of the best ways to find out what path you may want to go on is by just finding out what paths you definitely don't want to take in life, you know, and a process of elimination is, is, is a great tool. Who we know? talked about that with? That was you. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. I, I used to say that. was you. Okay, that yeah. was you. Yeah. Because my well, uncle, my uncle one time, he was like, what do you want to do? And I was like, oh, fuck, I don't know. I was like 16. <laughs> and then he was, and he was like, well, what do you not want to do? And I was like. Oh, this, 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 this. He's like, there you go. Do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't like, do those things. Down. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It's N like we think it it's down. the opposite way, mm -hmm. but it's just like, what? okay, it's so much harder to find out. I don't know because I haven't found it yet. Clearly, we're still here. So what don't you want to do? That's right. Yeah. Eliminate what you don't want to do. Take it off the table. Right. Eliminate the distractions. Right. In life, especially in modern time, there's so many distractions mm -hmm. all over the place. People are competing for your attention. Right. From the moment you wake <laughs> up the instincts of wanting to check the phone, right? I have to discipline myself so much not to look at that phone for That's the first couple thing. hours mm -hmm. of the day, right? It's hard. You go driving on the street, you know, you got billboards here, you got this, you got people uh, wearing all kinds of crazy stuff. So eliminating distractions in all facets of your life, right? And when you're trying to figure out, okay, well, what path am I gonna go down in life? Well, yeah, let's sit down and, and let's start eliminating what you don't like. And what are some characteristics once you start eliminating 10 things, what are some characteristics about those things that you just didn't like that are universal, right? And it could be, I don't know, like working with your hands. Like, okay, I definitely don't want to be a mechanic then. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, whatever it may be, yeah. you know, but eliminate those. And then when you try something also, don't give up. Don't quit so freaking fast. Mm. Like, you know, I see a lot of people... Uh, they start something and they don't give it enough time to really pull all the fruits from that tree, right? You, you don't you don't plant the the seed and see the tree grow overnight, and then it doesn't give you fruit overnight, and it doesn't give you all these beautiful things overnight. You know, you have to plant the seed, you have to nurture the soil, turn it, you have to water it every day, give it a lot of love, give it a lot of intention, and then watch the roots take growth, right? Roots grow deep tree can grow eventually it might give you fruit right and then once you have the fruit from the tree it's boundless it's endless it's infinite you literally tap into that infinite code because now you have the seed of life and that code we can go plant more and more and more and more right and you can share it with other people and i believe if you go down a path long enough that's rich in tradition that's rich in history that's rich in knowledge right that you will eventually obtain that tree for yourself within yourself mm. right you will become that tree right and then you have these fruits that are just bearing off of your person off your being and you just emanate in this frequency and you can just give it to this person and give it to this person and you're not really taking from yourself 
because this was just the abundance that was growing from my strong foundation mm. anyways, right? I already watered my tree. I already have strong roots. I already took care of myself. I already nourished myself. I can't give you one of my branches because then I won't have my branch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I can give you one of the fruits from my tree, mm. right? And then from there, you could eat the whole apple, so to say, metaphorically, mm -hmm. and throw away the seeds, right? And then that's it. Or you can take it and you can go plant your own tree. But just know that it's not going to show up overnight, mm -hmm. right? And uh, and that's so true metaphorically in, in, in any path of life, you know? When I'm to go see my master, you know, see all the amazing things he, he can do, and it's like, oh, man, I want to do all that, you know? But it's a lifetime journey yeah. to be able to accomplish those superhuman feats, right? So, but now I, I see it, and it's my, my inspiration. So, okay, if I stick to this path, you know, one day I can walk and in, in, in do that because I'm walking in, in the footsteps of the master, you know. So if you find a way, you know, experiment with it. If you like it, give it a try, you know. And once it gets a little bit tough, just keep doing it anyways, man, you know. If you really, really hate it, then okay, eliminate it. But give it that fair opportunity and uh, and keep going with it. It's just like we were talking about the yoga thing, Yeah. you know. You want to just start for a couple of days, like I'm like fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm, I'm done, at a, I'm at it now, bro. Like I'm like I got. I know this is like it keeps coming up to me. as all right, my fucker. We're, we're yoga. Yeah. I got to do yoga. I'm gonna do that shit later today. I'm texting you later, bro. Text me, bro. We're here. For <laughs> Accountability, yeah, man. And I, I need it, man. Yeah, I need. It. We all need that. And you know, it comes to the point. Like I, I guess now segue to the trust we were talking about earlier, mm. right? Like having that. Mm -hmm. How you know how it's in my experience what I'm learning. It's super important to have people accountable to. Mm -hmm. We need yes. that shit. We do. I need you to tell me, like, bro, you showing up? Yeah. And if you're not showing up, then let, I, I I got an hour. What the fuck is going on? Yeah. Let's get into this shit. Yeah, yeah, you man. know, because that's what we need to be able to go on to each other and really mm -hmm. be there. Yeah. And you know, and that's what I feel like a lot of men, like the the men thing, is that we've lost connection to each other. Mm hmm. Which is why, like, your brother yeah. did that. My brother, Bill, before he did all that, was seeking, like, he was in his own shit. Mm -hmm. My brother-in-law. We've fallen into this competition mindset. This competition, this lone lone wolf yeah. bullshit, this we're by ourselves. We get hooked with addictive to porn, to drugs, to crime, to whatever it is mm -hmm. that numbs us away. Yeah. Um, and what we need to do is be together. Mm -hmm. And so I need to be able, my brother can text me later and be like, hey, bro, did you do your thing? Mm-hmm. No. Of, yeah. Why? Mm -hmm. Now I got to fucking, you know, <laughs> like, because I'm a douchebag, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. whatever. But I'm going to do it right now, bro. You know, it's about really. And then answering with integrity. Yes. Too, man. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Because you can be like, yeah, I did it. Yes. But, but that fucks you up inside, man. Exactly. You know, like, you know, mm -hmm. it's just a reflection of the internal when you can really have that trust with the brother. It's just like, oh, this is just a reflection of what's happened inside me. Mm -hmm. so it's just really learning to ground yourself and that's why the community is so important that's why like i love the men's circles that mm -hmm. you're doing and i'm talking with him about we need you know i sisterhood is there yeah it's there you yeah, know they're, and, they're naturally a little bit better at it yeah us. right and it's like been a thing and you can go whatever type of shit but some reason men have detached from each other mm -hmm. and it's just like we got to come back yeah we got to come back we got to yeah. form this these tribes, whatever group that you want to be a part of, whatever you feel connected to, you got to connect to other men yeah. who you can be real with. Right. Because dealing with your two-year-old son ain't always easy, man. <laughs> dealing with your wife when she on her moon ain't always easy, dude. And we need, or whatever else, the bosses, the leadering, the investing, the business decisions. Like, mm -hmm. you don't need, we're not going to here to fix you. But it's just like, I'm here, I can hold space with you, mm -hmm. and we can do this. Yeah. You can do this, and whatever you need from me, we can be here, you know? So it's yeah. just like really having that accountability, that trust, that respect, that you know, and the vulnerability. And when you're in that brotherhood, too, it's uh, we've talked about this before in the in the circle, where, you know, you, you everybody, not even in just the brotherhood, right? In sisterhood, in the community, in all of it, we all have to be balanced and strong on our own two feet, yes. right? So I can't walk around off balance all day expecting you to prop me up, expecting this brother to prop me up, expecting this sister to prop me up, you know, or the door mm -hmm. or the frame or this and that. Mm -hmm. Like I have to be able to walk in my own balance. It's not to say that from time to time I might hit a rock or, or uh, a tree stump and trip, right? But when I do, 
hopefully it's more seldom mm -hmm. right but when i do that's when i have my brother here that's when i have my sister to my left and right right or 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 my my partner to my back yep. right or in front of me right or vice versa see my brother falling like let me just help prop them up yep. hey brother let me push you back into balance you good man cool let me let go let's flow yeah yeah, yeah. You're, you're back on your own man you know what i mean autonomy and, is important yeah we really feel that we want to have a certain independence mm -hmm. that is a thing with internal with internalists mm -hmm. that needs to come out i was i'm i'm like going between these two books i'm reading the art of impossible okay and oh by stephen cutler yes yeah yeah and uh um, almost worked for him oh no way yeah yeah that have been flow research collective yeah 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 because <laughs> yeah, that's what he's talking about how to consistently stay in flow state yeah right passion to purpose to autonomy and then mastery and however i'm not like i'm pretty sure that's the four and there's another one that comes there um but autonomy is one of the steps to be get into flow state mm -hmm. so it's so important that we feel like we can handle our own yeah that we get into that state mm -hmm. and but it's not that us choosing our tribe is still autonomy because we want to be surrounded by these people who live this way, who do this thing, mm -hmm. because our minds will naturally want to be like them too. Yeah. Right. Instead of being addicted to the TV or the the billboard, like mm -hmm. we're being hit everywhere else. Mm -hmm. Let's make sure we're controlling what we're getting hit with. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Control your exposures. Yes, exactly. 100%. Man. Yeah. 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 Then you can kind of, um, I mean, you can still brainwash yourself. You yeah, know? for sure. Oh, yeah, but, always, but, you can, but if you're in control of doing it to yourself, like that's great. You know, I mean, we're always being this is a strong word, but I know what you're saying. It has it's a like, negative connotation, maybe, but you you can influence your own mind instead. Yeah, well, because otherwise, someone else is going to do it. Yeah, it's going absolutely. to happen regardless. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, do you want to be in control of it, or do you want to just leave it up to chance? Yeah. Right. And say, no, I'm going to be in control, and this is what I'm going to purposely expose myself to. These are the people I'm going to hang out with. There's the people I'm going to attract in my life. And next thing you know, you do. You just start attracting them. And then know? you start feeling better. Yeah. And you go in, right? It just get follow the bliss. Mm -hmm. That's why everyone says follow your bliss. Follow the cookie trail. Yeah, because it, it, the cookie trail, because it feels good. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, yeah, once you're with those people, it's like, oh, can mm -hmm. yeah, this is the state of being that I want to, you want to stay in. You know, it's just like when we were in Hawaii, one of the things we learned, it's just like one, I told you, like, slow down. But another thing, like, this is the, why can't I have this vibe how I feel right now everywhere I go in my life? Mm -hmm. You can't. Why can't I have to go on vacation to feel this vibe? Mm. That's a lie I told myself. Right. By whatever influences I thought that had to be. So it's just like home could feel just like this too. Okay, but what needs to change? What needs to die? Mm. What, yes. needs to, what needs to not be happening? What do you need anymore? to let go of yeah, to what make needs space to let, for? For that to happen. Yes. Right? What, what are those different things that need to happen? And what I've also learned that there's a grieving process to that. Mm -hmm. There's a process of letting go of the own self because, hey, thank you. You were there for me when I needed you in those moments. Yeah. You know, I yeah. didn't need that for a certain amount of time frame in my life. Yeah. I didn't feel safe there. enough. I didn't feel this or I was numb. I was just so hurt that I couldn't see myself in the mirror. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to look at myself in the mirror. That's right. You know, and I didn't want to realize all this stuff. So I did these things. Well, thank you for keeping me alive because I'm still here. But now I've hit the other switch and I'm trying to open up all the binding, let it all in. Yeah. And let's release day by day, take these things on every day. Mm -hmm. Showing up. And that's the thing where I'm like, I openly talked about last time. It was like being able to be vulnerable and be like, I want to show up for me. Because mm -hmm. I'm the one, I'm reading this book on day trading or on just trading period. Yeah. It, you know, just trading. It's not day trading. It's really trading. It's like, how much do you really not going to show up for yourself? Mm. Because you really self-sabotage yourself. No one's going to buy a trade and mm. sell it. Right. But you. Mm -hmm. The market's just giving you data. Yeah. It depends on what you do with it and how you control yourself and your emotions and your psychology or understand. He's like, his whole premise was mostly what you know about psychology and stuff doesn't work in trading. Mm -hmm. And it's going to show in training. <laughs> Because your money is a big thing, right? We have this thing with money in America. It's capitalism. Get all the money, this, and that's what's going to bring the happiness. That's all the things. So it's like you watch yourself lose that shit for a little bit, but the probability it that's going to hit gonna, you in the gut. Yeah, but <laughs> you got to remember your process. There's a process to it that at the end where you're trying to reach, the probability is going to happen there. So what are the psychological tools? What are you? Are, how do you stay balanced in an uncertain environment? Mm-hmm. And I can't help but read books and think about it with all life, man. 
mm-hmm. because that's what kind of life is. Like it you is. were talking about doing your daily morning routine. Yeah. We All don't know. Relate. We don't know if when we're going to get that call, man. Mm-hmm. My sister had surgery on her foot and low key. I was like, fuck. Like, wake up. <laughs> you better <laughs> fucking wake up from that damn anesthesia, man. Right. You know, it's just like realizing that's inside of me. Mm hmm sitting with it and just being like yeah okay i do fear this but i gotta trust yeah you know i just gotta trust that hope and everything happens and if this does happen whatever if something does happen in a negative way that i don't like that hurts me then what how will i deal with it then the detachment yeah Yeah. detachment's important man yeah you know it can be one of the toughest things though yes it's good in theory but Detachment stuff. It's man. hard, man. You yeah. know, it's, and and I, I think detachment has a negative connotation too because it's not it's not I'm detached from feeling what I feel. Mm. It's being detached from the outcome. Yeah, I'm not in control of the outcome. Mm-hmm. So it's just like I literally just have to learn how to stay and be centered in this place of uncertainty. Yeah, and and still be okay. Yeah, you know, and that's a battle, man. Yeah, it is. That's learning to go through that shit. It's <laughs> wild. <laughs> Being able to pull away from it all. Yeah, exactly, man. So what else is going on, man? What if you might I don't know if you're openly ready to share about the book. Um, or is that a little premature yeah. right now? Um, or it's it's in the process. Okay. You know, so so writing this book is just something I've been working on for a while. Um, you know, there's there's a big backstory, you know, which I'm not gonna release just yet. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, you know, it's the book. The book is coming, <laughs> man. So we'll talk about it when you get closer. Yeah, man. yeah, man. How is the str- how is the how is the let's talk about the process of writing though. Yeah, so that's been the the longest battle. You okay. know what I mean? Like you said, procrastination earlier. Like definitely have that. Then I have you know these these thoughts that come up in my mind. Like again you know oh you're not good enough to write a book yet Mm. you know like what are you doing like you're you're not there yet like you know and um so self-doubt comes in so this negative self-talk comes in and then i just realize at the end of the day i just need to be me and what's been helping me a lot more in, in in like putting in some some pages on this book is i'm writing it for myself and I'm just being truthful to myself mm. and the the processes that I've learned and the life that I've experienced and what I've pulled out of each one of these lessons, right? And I'm just being honest with myself all the way through and through. And also in that honesty, there has to be an extreme amount of uh, a key word that I've been practicing is vulnerability, you know, which is why I kind of opened up like, Boom, let's drop in with some vulnerable moment. Yeah. And then everything else from there is a lot easier to talk about. Exactly. Yeah, sure, you're goddamn right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just get the worst right out the yeah. out the gate. Get it done with. Right. But yeah, so being vulnerable, being open enough, uh, and then trusting myself and then writing the book for myself in a sense. Mm. Right. And, and, and in that truth and in that honesty, uh, I feel that there's being there, there's some good nuggets that are gonna come out of it. And my goal, my intention with it is just to help um just to help anybody who, who may will put their eyes on it. On their journey. Yeah, on their journey. The intention is to, to help grow and uh, help people find their own self-mastery, mm. right? So if I can help other people find their own self-mastery, freaking awesome, man. Hey, kudos, know? man. I just started mine, too. Yeah? Yeah. Sweet, man. And um, I, I started writing, it and I, I feel I'm learning like I'm a professional perfectionist oh, when it comes man. to my shit. Yeah. It has to be a certain way. It has to do that. Yeah. But I'm also like, I'm realizing as I'm writing, and a great quote from this book that I got, Training the Zone, from Mike Douglas, is that what he's learning, he's like, I know for myself, like, I know what I'm saying for myself mm-hmm. internally. But now it's learning the technique or learning really to understand it enough so I can really explain it to you clearly. The audience. The audience, the yeah. person who's going to read this thing. And he was like, the first book, it took him seven years. And I don't know why, but I was like, that just made me feel better, bro. Thank God. Like, I know this is going to be. It makes me feel better. You know, it's going to be a journey. It's like year three. (laughs) Yeah, it's going to be a journey. It's going to be a process. Like, because, and it's also what I'm learning about it right now is that I'm really going to get into the depth of what I mean Mm -hmm. when I said this, when I say this. I know what I mean, but putting it in paper and I'm going to be writing it out. It's like, yeah, that's it. I remember Jordan Peterson said is that every sentence in his 
book was analyzed. Is that really what I'm trying to say? Mm. And I'm really getting to that point where it's just like, when I say this, is it really being, is that what I mean when I say that? Mm -hmm. So it's like, this is going to be a process for me yeah, of really is. understanding. Okay. When, what do I mean when I, I think, what, what was it? When I was, um, uh, I forgot, like, what was it? Strength, openness. What did real, what does openness really mean to me? Mm. Or what did vulnerability, mm -hmm. what does that really mean to me? And when I mean vulnerability and strength, when I say the, the foundation is made of these things, what am I really meaning when I say strength? Mm -hmm. Because people's connotations are going to come into that. My own connotation of what that is. Yeah. So now I'm really defining, this is what I mean when I mean strength. Yes. You know, and really going to go through, it's really going to give, I, what I, when I realized that as like one paragraph in, I'm like, damn, this is going to give me a real sense of who I am when I'm done with this thing. 100%, man. Yeah. Because I really have to get to what the fuck I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's like. Use the thesaurus we were talking about earlier. Yeah, I'm going to do that too. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the sor yes, I'm going to do that. Let's find out a word. Let's find out a thesaurus. Because <laughs> I was like, it was like vulnerability and openness. And I was like, are those the same thing? Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know either. Yeah. And like, am I, and that's just, but that's one of the things I'm like thinking. I was yeah. like. Am I really saying the same thing with those two words? But when you crack open that thesaurus and then I you start reading it, it's like, hang on, boom, 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 boom. And like, oh, wait, this word, boom. Resonates or sometimes more. I sneak in like three words that all kind of mean the same thing within the same structure. Yeah. Within the same sentence. Yeah. You know? uh, and I feel like it'll, it'll captivate different angles, right? Because mm. we were talking about that earlier, right? Nice. Yeah. So we're all going up to the mountaintop, but you might be on that side of the mountain, this side of the mountain, this side of the mountain. Yeah. So, you know, you might respond to vulnerability. I might respond to openness. This brother over here might respond to transparency, you know? Mm -hmm. So, boom, if we can sneak all those in, here we just kind of yeah. got a larger the, audience. Exactly. Larger audience. But it's also, it might, you know, what just came up for me is it's a paintbrush. Mm -hmm. Different strokes of different things and that, that final painting came in. Yeah. Because not all, it's not all, like, you. typically there's more colors underneath that one color that form that thing. Oh, that contrast. Yeah, that contrast yeah. that came out, right? Or the texture. Yeah. How much how much paint did you put on there? Yeah. So it's just another way of doing that. Wordsmithing, man. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking dope, man. I love <laughs> word. words were the spelling, right? It's a spell. So I want to make is. sure when I'm putting this out there, there's a certain energy that I want to come into when you're yeah. coming to this book. Yeah. And in the framework of what it is. And I mean, you know, I don't know how long it's gonna take. I'm working on it though, little by little. It's a thing. Yeah, I realized, you know, um, you know, if I were to to die, you know, or or be told, Okay, you got you got two months to live, bro you know say okay well what would i do this is just recently you know like what would i really really want to get done it's mm. a good exercise for everybody yeah. you know and uh and i thought about a few things you know but one of them would be like man i would really want to write a book i want to leave something you know, even if it's just for my children even if it's just for me i don't know but the children that's what i always think of too is like my kids can read this man yes my grandkids will be even if it just stays in the family that's right this is the wisdom and this is for my my downline yeah you know like hey you know at least be better than these lessons here yeah <laughs> <laughs> don't do this same you know, shit yeah so, sorry if pops messed up in certain areas yeah you know uh that, but that's what we all do in parenting i think it's a circle yeah. yeah i always go back to this quote i was reading this article i think and it was like you know your kid's gonna go to therapy from you raising it doesn't matter like something we're gonna do is gonna come out and it's gonna be their way of perceiving it or whatever yeah in that one moment will trigger something even if we give them a great life we all you know, need coaching you know but those little traumas that come up that yeah. are always there yeah. but never do i want my kids to never feel like i didn't love them yeah or i didn't get on their level or if i didn't hey like i'm here with you though like yeah. i fucked up i'm sorry but i'm here mm -hmm. dad's house is always here chase your shit yeah. Come sleep on my couch. I don't give a shit. That's you, right. You fucking, you start 10 businesses, you got a family and all of a sudden it fucks up in your family. You, guess what? Come on, Michael. You guys are on my bed. I'll sleep on the goddamn yoga mat. Like, yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. put the brand kids on the bed. I don't mm -hmm. care. Cause that level of safety of love yeah. is what like ignites people. And I want my kids to feel like they can do whatever. Mm -hmm. That pure foundation. Go bro. Yeah. You're mm -hmm. good. And you're always going to be good. Yeah. You know, I think that's the most important thing we can do as parents, too, is just to give them the absolute strongest foundation 
that we can. Yeah. You know, and then we can expose them to many different things, teach them as much as we know about life. I think those are all great extra bonuses, but they have to know they can be safe. They can be secure. They always have a place to fall back upon. And uh, and, and they know that their rock bottom doesn't look so, so bad. Yeah. You know, even if it's, it's sleeping on mom's couch again, you know. OK, but right, you're good. You're good, man. My mom has some bomb ass cooking. Yeah, yeah. Mom's gonna we, give me some love. And that's one thing we were talking. Me and my lady were talking about how, really, like everything else is cool. You know, all the outside stuff. But if we're cool, me, her, the family's good. Really, we're always good. Mm-hmm. As long as us four are good, we're good. That's right. Everything else is like extra. Yeah. Yeah. I, ha- I want to do this. I want to go here. I want the podcast, the business, all that. Yeah. But it's really extra. Yeah. So how do I keep this unit together? Last mm-hmm. night we're in the grass at 10 p.m. throwing a frisbee. Yeah. You know, like man, we go for a walk as a family at night. Like this is this is what we do. Mm-hmm. This is who we are. Yes. You know, it's not the definition of how many hours I've worked or how much money I made. It's like that is cool and those things are fun and all. And the kids don't even care about that. They stuff, don't. Man. They just want the hug, man. They want yeah. his dad that paying quality attention time. To yeah. Yeah. This, this price really learning to show up in that way has been a thing for me to really learn. Likewise, bro. You know, like yeah. being a father, my dad joined the army. My stepdad was there. He had his own little things. Like, what does it mean to see in those two reflections? Who's the dad that I want to penetrate through yeah. through these kids? Yeah. And then how am I fathering the little Ronnie inside to mm-hmm. make sure, hey, bro, you're safe enough to be safe enough for your kids. That's right. I want them to feel safe enough. Like, whatever I thought I didn't need, I want them to be fair enough. So, like, my wife caught me on Instagram doing it, but I was like talking to my son about something he was doing. I saw that video. Yeah, yeah you yeah, saw yeah, that, yeah. right? I was like, I'm literally like in my mind, I was like, she's fucking always paying attention to me, man. Like yeah, yeah. The, the mama is always watching, yeah, man. Yeah, mama, mama's eyes. You man. know, but yeah. I was literally like standing, I'm talking to him because I was just having a conversation with my oldest son. You know, they just, you, they, I can feel the energy when you know it's going too far. Yeah. And even before they know it, but I'm like, hey, stop. Whatever you're doing right now, this is not working. Because I've seen it multiple times. Someone's going to get punched. Someone's going <laughs> to then <it's> so cry <laughs> and then go. So I talked to one first, but he's, ta- he's like getting taller, so I don't have to get down. Yeah. You know, but I'm like talking to him here. And then I the talk to hurt, my, bro. they do. Yeah. And then I took my other one come and I'm talking to him and I'm like looking down at him. And I'm like, I don't think this feels like. I'm not trying to scold you. This is just a conversation yeah. about what's happening. Let's get eye to eye. I need to lower myself yeah. right now because mm-hmm. I don't want you to feel like you're you're in trouble, you're losing, you're bad. Like, no, let's have a conversation right now. So that's why I, I dropped down. It was just like learning that they are humans and expressions of their own self. And I'm just here to assist. Yes. You know, and I'm just trying to be a reflection of what I see and teach them when I go. But I'm no better than you, my brother. Right. My son. Yeah. At a deep, you know, you are my son. Yeah. So it's like I'm trying to remind myself over and over, get to his level. And that, that and when I say get to his level, I'm not shrinking. He's not little. That doesn't mean he's a small person. Right. That just means wherever he's at, I want to be at. Eye to eye. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To eye to eye. You are. Th- yeah. You are a being. You sink brainwave. Yes, Thanks. exactly. You do that too. So I just wanted to see. And then, yeah, man, it's just really. I, re- I guess now even talking about it, I really appreciate she did that because yeah. that's like you were reflecting what I was doing in my my mind and mm-hmm. to be witnessed and to witness myself doing that was like that's that's the dad yeah that you wanted to be that I want to be yeah. in that moment yeah. and I'm glad it was caught on like you I'm not being a solid dad man you're welcome you man know, as you, a son yeah <laughs> <laughs> thank you man you're you welcome know. you too bro yeah yeah appreciate it I man. see you I saw your video of you with your son at your your gym. I yeah. don't know what that specific uh, at the martial called. arts school. Yeah, the martial arts yeah, school. Do, dojang. The Donjon, right? Yeah. And I was just like, when I see, I have another buddy too, and it's his kids. He's a he's a physique workout. Shout out to Rudy. Um, his kids. He just lets his kid play around in there. Yeah. Like, the this energy. is our space, man. Mm-hmm. And dad's like being his their son's doing that. It's like, yeah, bro. Like, you bring in your son to where you're at. Mm-hmm. Bring those spaces into that. You yeah. know, and it's so. You know, you are helping the collective when we do that to them, when yes. we take care of them for the future generations. Mm-hmm. We got to get back to the family units. Yes. That's really where it's all at, man. It's the strength. That's it, man. You know, something that I've done with my son, too, is, um, you know, view him as the guru, view him as the mm. master, view him as the teacher and giving him that respect and place of, OK, he already kind of knows everything. And then seeing him in that light and then trying to parent around there, you mm. know, and, and it kind of puts me in a place more where he's kind of guiding me in my parenting. 
you know. It's a, it's a great way. <laughs> it is. It's so good, man, because I, I never said it like that. My son just dyed his hair blue. Oh, wow. Yeah. Interesting. Right? Yeah. And my oldest is like, nah, bro, like, I'm going to do that shit. Right? Yeah. But he, I think there was a time where he wanted to dye his hair like blonde or something. We it's didn't the time do, to do it. it man. Yeah. We didn't do it. But now with my yeah. youngest, we were, he, he just was told my wife, I, I want to dye my hair blue. And my wife was like, okay. And I'm just like, it's okay. Cool that she let him explore yeah, all Yeah. And it. I'm just, okay. That yeah. goes back to the safety. Like, you're good. Yeah. Your hair color don't define what the fuck you are no. inside. Yeah. Right? So it's, what I also love is the creativity. I yeah. want to do something. Be different, man. This is what I'm doing. Same kid that's in gate, too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the younger one. He's the younger one. But the, yeah, it's just like, it's, the, it's like you're allowed to have a self expression. Yeah. But then I get the things from other family members. It's just like, what the fuck is going on? Judgment. Yeah. Why are you doing that? I'm like, bro, let the motherfucker explore who he is. Like, it's I don't, judgment, man. I don't yeah. want him to be anybody else but him. And yeah. why does that hurt anybody? Yeah. Why does it make you feel uncomfortable? That mm -hmm. he is expressing himself. There you go. You know, but it goes back to the teacher. What I really got from it is, man, I love that he wants something and he does it. Yes. And I love that he's just. And you facilitating the space for him to want it and yeah. being able to achieve it. It's so you know? vital for me. Yeah. But it's the master in him is yeah. what, what I really want to really bring out of that is it's like he he is his he's giving himself what he wants he is worthy enough to change his things he is worthy enough to do all the shit he has he doesn't feel bad about having too much money because his family doesn't have money he doesn't feel bad because he's got this and family like all the other bullshit he don't give a shit it's his avatar man yeah, yeah. he just does exactly he just did what yeah. he wants. i'm just like man i love that you feel that way to be that because you like he doesn't know but he's giving me permission to be you to do whatever the fuck i want yeah man Mm -hmm. you know so yeah. kids are the masters man they are man they teach kids, you so much so much about yourself yeah yeah they elevate your game they activate some dormant dna inside <laughs> of us you know it just comes out yeah man yeah it takes these like super saiyan status man. hell yeah bro <laughs> oh man appreciate you so what's next bro what you got going on next what do you mean bro like what what's the solar i don't know we're doing another men's group next month i forgot we got doing that yeah another like, men's group next month july uh july 6th i want to say okay first, first tuesday of next month yep um that's 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 the next big project Rolling. there yep yeah right now i'm just buckered in and uh in, in knocking out this book you know yeah i do solar on the side uh but that's really uh you know i believe in the project of it all uh but but not the the long term it's path. a structure for you right now yeah uh -huh, that's absolutely. what the military is for me sure yeah yeah, yeah exactly it's a structure you know, for me right it's now a, it's a vehicle uh, where I can still be a service to the community mm -hmm. and be a service to my family and a service to the globe yeah. all at once, you know, but right now I'm being guided to, um, redirect, rebrand myself and go a different direction. Okay. So my intention for this next decade, my, my personal lifeline, uh, timeline decade is just to help as many individuals as possible Hell yeah. in this next decade. And uh, I feel like in, in writing this book, I'm developing the structures and the techniques and the tactics that I want to be able to share with others to just help guide them on their own journeys uh, of self-empowerment, mm. self-mastery, and, uh, and then let that kind of ripple out and grow from there, man. Sounds so, beautiful, man. Yeah, yeah. Fucking here, whatever you need, I'll here to support you, man. Thanks, man. I appreciate Wait, it. Bro. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, man, please do. Um, is your middle name Thor? <laughs> is your son's name is Odin? Yeah, so my son's name is Odin. Wait, oh no, wait, that would be backwards. Whoops, it, it, I fucked that up. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't Thor <laughs> son yeah. of Odin? Son of I Odin. fucked that up. I fucked that up. Yeah, yeah. He, your grandson will be. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm my just being yeah. yeah, you know how can I? If I ask you, how is it? How do you feel internally now that you have a daughter with the son? With the son, I mean, it's, it's, it's my yin and yang now, man. Yeah. So I feel like it's complete balance mm. because uh, I felt that my son has all of my, I mean, he's definitely like mini me, man. He's yeah. my little clone for mm. sure, bro. That's awesome. And uh, like, like the, they, they made him in a science lab. Right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's so <laughs> it's like awesome. how the hell this shit happened. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah it's, 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 it's weird sometimes like looking yeah. at like, whoa. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, so, so my son's awesome. You know, my daughter's just as amazing as well. Uh, and, and developing and learning the relationship with her is great because my son taught me so much 
about myself, but my daughter's going to teach me so much about myself as well. My son taught me a lot about the the masculine side of me yeah. and also the feminine side of me yeah, as well for sure. because I have to to nurture uh, all sides of him. Mm-hmm. And now my daughter will be the same thing yes. also. But now I get to play the role of um, the bi-masculine for my daughter. First love. And, and yeah, the first, first, first love. With, with, yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So learning that process there, it's, um, it's exciting. You yeah. Know? So more than anything with my daughter, I'm just so excited to continue to get to know her and uh, to see her blossom and, uh, and explore who she is, you know. Uh, as she starts to develop her personality and, and all that, right now she's only two months. Yeah, so. she's a little. So thing. as you know, she's. she's but ready. even that brings different things because I've never changed yeah. a little baby di- girl diaper. You know, like yeah. what the little things that come up through that and all the different. Yeah. So it's just a different. It's, it's a different. It's perfect. It's, it's just yeah. pure balance now. Yeah, that's you know? awesome. Now I got my boy. I got my girl. Yeah. My yin and my yang. Yeah. And uh, and, and I'm interested mm-hmm. to see like what, uh, like the divine feminine side of mm-hmm. me that carried into her Mm -hmm. uh and then the divine masculine side of me that carries into her as well and then um my beautiful partner you know just seeing what sides of her are in my daughter too Mm -hmm. and just like with my son with my with my ex um wife uh seeing the sides of her that are within him and it's fun because you just get to kind of see like Oh, that's 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 me. My, yeah. my bad. <laughs> I'll claim yeah, that one. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That one's not me. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So man. I'm excited for you. Yeah, it's cool. It's yeah. gonna be a fun experience, man. Awesome, bro. You know, I think it's gonna teach me a lot. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll get you back on here, man. Yeah, man. You know, keep it coming. You get their book writing, whatever it is. You feel yeah. like you gotta share some shit. We get you on here. We talk, man. Thanks, man. I this look is forward to uh, such an awesome experience. I look forward to our relationship develop- developing and moving Likewise. on and just spending more time, man. So I appreciate you for coming on. Likewise, man. All I right. appreciate you. I appreciate everybody watching the show as well, brother. Is, is there any, brother, man. if there's anything you want to like plug or anything like that or social medias or something like that? I don't know. Um, it's up to you. I'll put all like whatever. I'll have you give me a. Bunch What's your social media, links. bro? Freaking so yeah, you know uh, I'm on uh, Ken Ken Eagle Eye, and, and you'll find my social media right away. Uh, and, and what I truly stand for at the end of the day is uh, the, the three tenets that I've kind of built my whole life around, and that I believe we can change the world with, which are love, honor, and respect. If I fully love, honor, and respect myself, then I can fully love and respect, uh, honor, and respect the community, the world that I walk in, and everything around me. I can also be concerned about everything around me. And then, of course, with all of that power comes intention. And then with that intention, we can use that to guide and, and push in any direction that we want to go with. Right. So I Hell love, yeah. honor, and respect each and every one of you listening to this. You, my brother, and you, my brother over there. So thank you, guys. Hell yeah. Appreciate That's it. That's awesome. Hey. Yeah. If you want to go follow him, I got all his links. Yeah. He's going to give me. I'll put it in the description We'll get all that below. for you. Yep. So you can go through that. that Hell way. yeah. Hope you guys have a blessed day. Take care now. Bye-bye then. We'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.